Well, g'day folks. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you again. Got a bit of a fun little painting for us to do uh, this week. I recently painted these couple of pelicans, a little sketch, uh, on the river embankment here in Noosa. Um, so I called them the Noosa Pelicans and uh, I thought well, that might make an interesting episode for us to do something a little bit different in Learn to Paint TV for this week. So I'll pop that down there and uh, we'll have a go at doing that one. Obviously the most important part about this painting is getting the right shapes and details in for the two pelicans. Um, they're both looking at something in the distance and one of them sort of stepping out of the water. So it makes for a, you know, an interesting little composition for us. So we'll get started. Step one, as always, more method is the uh, get the drawing in. So we'll concentrate on getting those two little pelicans in just the right shape and see how we go from there. The rest of it's pretty easy. It's just a little sort of water scene, which we don't want to put too much detail in. So step one, as always, is our drawing. I'll just mix our ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson around together. A little bit of water at this stage. Don't use water much with our acrylic paints. And let's see if we can't get these guys in. So probably the starting point here is going to be the head there. And then it comes down to this sort of long neck to about there. And then this body comes back into some tails there. Okay, I think the head and the beak is really a pretty important part of this. So that's what we'll focus getting getting that just right like so. And then the leg comes down to there, and I've got one at the back, which is going to go into the water there. And we get some lovely highlights on these uh, two pelicans, which um, make it a you know great little painting to do. Now underneath, this is an important part of this painting, we have this shadow. So for the moment, I'll just indicate it fairly broadly, just sort of like so. And that helps anchor him to the ground there. And we'll obviously put him in the water as well. And then his mate is a little bit smaller, it's sort of set back a little bit. So I paint him the same size, which means when we're starting out with his head, um, he's going to be you know, a little bit smaller. So I'll just start off with a little sort of circle there and then we'll find his beak there. Okay. Next going to be a little bit shorter. And then this side of the body, it goes like that. Okay. And that rounds under there. And then out to the side here, he's got his wing Just sort of out a little bit and then the body comes around so it's probably a little bit too big there and then he's sort of got one foot in the water and he's lifting one foot out of the water so a little something like that okay so he's definitely going to be smaller and set back a little bit from our main guy if you make them both the same size it's just not going to quite feel right. Okay. Now the rest of it is really just layers of paint. You know, we've got like this sand run sort of through there. Okay. Um, oh, we've got to pop him under some shadow as well. So we're sort of right on the water's edge where the water and the sand come together. And, um, and then it runs down to sort of some deeper water around about there. Um, actually, we'll make it a little bit lower so we don't intersect that guy's head. So that's where our deeper water is going to start, about there. And then we have a bit of a dark shadow behind them. And that dark shadow is sort of like a, uh, it's a wharf or something. Um, oh, and there was a boat that was sitting in there. Reflection of the boat. 
Um, so this is like a pier or something up here. And then that reflects into the deeper water. And what that does is it gives us some nice darks around the heads of the pelicans, which enables us to put the highlight on and get that nice contrast. Okay. So look, that's pretty simple little sketch of these guys here. Um, we, as you know, we like to keep it fairly simple with our drawing, but the shapes are important. Getting those right shapes so that they look like a couple of pelicans up to no good. Okay. There's a little seagull there, but whether we put him in, um, we'll decide as we go. Might be a bit crowded for that. But I think that's all we need to do really at this stage for step one um, of the more method, which is getting our drawing. And I think we've achieved that. Pretty happy with the way that's gone. So we'll move on and do step two, which is our blocking stage. So what I'm going to do is just add up some extra colors here. Our three primary colors. So I've got ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, and yellow ochre now. And then I'll add up some titanium white as well. And first step is we'll get that dark in. So the dark of that uh, wharf area and then the dark of that boat. <coughs> well, in fact, we'll just treat it all as one big dark and I just need a bit more blue and red up there, I think. Okay, so what I always find best is big brushes and lots of paint and uh, we're just blocking in, getting our big shapes in at this stage, getting our tonal patterns right. So you don't want to fuss too much with this. A little bit of the yellow in there just to grab it back a bit and let's just block that in. Shift up the temperature by making it a little bit cool, a little bit warmer where you need to around that boat. Okay, and then just obviously cut in around the heads here of the pelicans. Because we're using acrylics and we know that that's going to dry before we move on to step three we don't have to be too careful because we can reshape the head if we need to okay one of the great advantages of the acrylics Notice I'm getting some just pure colour in there as well, the blue and the red. Once you've got enough of that dark down, you can you can do that. You can just go blocks of pure colour in there, which we've got. So I've got blue and red in there to signify some warmer and some cooler patches. Okay, this little boat sitting to the side here. We'll just make that more on the red. Sort of side. We won't add too much detail to any of this background information here. Um, maybe a little, but we don't want the eye to be drawn to any of that. Okay, so the waterline is going to sort of run through around right about there. Okay, that's where the boat and the jetty are sort of meeting the water. So that feels pretty easy. We've managed to get that done without too much fuss at all. Next thing is to get in a lighter tone for our deeper water, okay? Which so we'll bring that up into here. Um, and then we'll transition into a sandy color um, and we'll overlap the two. So what we'll need is more blue for the water. <laughs> so at this stage, we want to paint the water in a more horizontal fashion. 
So we'll take probably all of that white we're going to need, and we'll take a big chunk of that blue. Okay, remember this is going to dry a little bit darker than what we put down, so got to be mindful of that. get that in. So we're just doing this blocky now. We're not trying to create paint, you know, with ripples or waves or anything like that at this stage. There's no refinement going on here. It's more about shape and value. So that gives us our deeper water. What I'll do is I'll just darken it a little bit further away just to indicate a bit of a graduation in that water depth. And I'll darken it just a little bit more at the top. So hopefully that'll just indicate when it all dries and settles down, it'll indicate to the viewer that there's deeper water out there. And then we're coming into this little shallower water here, which will now add in the yellow ochre side of it. Titanium white, you rescue that yellow ochre. Okay. Take all of that, a little bit of that white, pop that there. Now I'm not using the Artillery Interactive what, uh, yellow ochre here, I've got a different brand and I've just run out of the Artillery Interactive. I'm not that thrilled with the tone of it, I might just take a little bit of this dirt, that darker colour, and just mix that in just to shift the tone a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go with my, this is our dry sand area in here. Okay. Up around that shadow area. Vary the tone up a little bit, it can get some lighter variations in here and there. Give it add a little bit of red in. Whoop, that's a bit too much. Get rid of that. A little bit of that won't hurt though. Just for a bit of warmth in that sand. Because now as I add more white to that. we come back into the part of the, where the sand is now under the water, okay? It's, um, you're seeing the sandy bottom of the shallow water now. And we'll help it have that illusion by um, adding ripples of water over the top of that. And it's gonna bring it up and just Merge it in with that deeper water there. Working around the bodies. Okay. Just softly blending that in. I've used lots of paint, so the paint is still a little bit wet there. Looks just wet enough for me to scrub the two together and get a little bit of blending there. But I don't want it to be blend, blended too much. It can uh, 
yeah, broken sort of blend if that makes sense. Doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth blend in there. Okay. Very good. All right, got a lot of variety of things happening in that sand there now, which is good. Water's looking good and our darks are going to settle down nicely. I think we're going along quite well. What we'll do now is get a little bit of work into the bodies of the two little guys there. So th their bodies are in shadow, basically. These parts in here, and then we're gonna hit some highlights here and there. So it's nearly all in shadow. So our shadow tone is really just that blue and red. And I'll just add in a little bit of yellow ochre to grey it a bit. Okay. And then we can lighten it back with a bit of white. Actually, I'll just push it slightly to the bluer side. Because we're going to get their underbellies and so on that's away from the sun. It wants to be sort of a bluey grey, not a, not a warmer grey. So then we'll just come in here. Now if you... To ask anybody, they'd tell you that pelicans are white, but in shadow, that shadow is going to be a darker tone as we have just indicated. Okay, so it's that one. Run that up through the head, neck. So it's still a lighter value than the shadow of that wharf there. Should have been a bit darker. Okay. Just get some of that much darker tone there. And I'll just pop that back in there. A little bit there. Alright folks, well I think they're coming along nicely here at the moment, we've uh, finished our blocking phase, got a fair bit of paint on there so we didn't let it all dry off, but I think overall our shapes are working, we've got everything where it needs to be in the right value, so I'm pretty happy the way it's going. This will really come to life when we start to detail up the water, so a little bit in the background, uh, but most importantly obviously the two, uh, two pelicans. So. We'll let that dry for about an hour or so, and then we'll come back and we'll um, get stuck into step three and bring this painting to life. I'll see you there. Cheers. Okay, welcome back, folks. This has had a, a chance to dry off, and I think it's settled down quite nicely. So now we're going to move into step three, which is all about getting the details in and the highlights. There's not a lot in this painting, and we're not going to spend too much time on this section. In fact, you'll be surprised at just how quickly it does come together um, as we start to, you know, Add in a few little touches, so I'll just get some more paint. I've got some blue up there. So the first thing I want to do is just introduce a little bit of water ripple in over the uh, sand area there. So I'm going to take that blue and some white. We'll just mix up a nice light value there. Uh, 
paint's a little bit clumpy because I've I'm working back into paint that's been sitting on the palette there for a while, which is not ideal. Um, I could always squirt it with some water if it was a problem. Um, but often I will refresh and get fresh paint out for this section. So try it both ways. So I'm just getting the tiniest little bit of paint on my brush here. And uh, what we're going to do is just put in some little effects of water ripples here. So I'm going to overdo it, but we need to go over that shadow line and around the uh, feet of Mr. Pelican there. So it's just a very light touch and a, a light amount of paint is what you want here. What that does, it just gives the impression of little ripples of water um, rolling in over that sandy area there. It helps us then connect it with that back section where the deeper water is. So, not everywhere though, that's the important thing. And then we'll take some of the white there, and with just a little bit of this yellow ochre, just pick up a little bit of that just to tint the white. It's too white there. some up that might be wet off that palette. Okay, so now I've gone too far, so I'll add a bit more white back in. And that should get us to a happy medium. So I'll just pull that paint off the brush, and then I will just, again, load just the tip there, and then out in this deeper water, well, where this boat is, basically. And that'll be an important the starting point for us. So you just see it just helps us transition into that deeper water there. some alizarin and crimson in up on the board. We want to get into those beaks and their legs. Um, to do that I'm going to go with my script brush. This is one from the Robert Hagen collection. It's a little bit fatter than what I might like, but not to worry. We'll take a little bit of that alizarin crimson and we'll take a chunk of the white we are going to come out with our own Learn to Paint brand of brushes and, the, and paints in the not too distant future. But for the moment, if you're looking for a brush set, um, check out the ones that Robert Hay has put together for watercolour, uh, sorry, for watercolour, for oil painting. Okay, we'll just start to work in his uh, beak here. If you ever get up noose away, then uh, come and check out these guys. Well, I painted these from uh, some photos I took of the Noosa Pelicans. They were hanging around the boat shed there. Boat shed being a fairly well-known 
restaurant and a great spot to view the sunsets. doing this a little bit rough just because I don't want this video to take hours you might take a little bit longer with yours and go for a bit more accuracy but um, I'm just doing a little demo here so uh, you could get it a lot more accurate if you want to now just take some pure white just on the tip of the brush there like so and then we're going to come down and we are going to just Bring that down to there, on the back of his head, and down there. Across his wing there. I might have that wing just a little bit high, but you get the idea. It's sort of like shifting position and. Just moved his, his wing there. Okay. So that means that this guy here is going to be catching light right around that. Right over his head. back there okay and now we need a dark which I'm going to have to remix so blue and red you don't want a black you just want it to be a little on the dark side Probably a little bit overall, a little bit too dark with these guys, I'm suspecting. Might have to lighten them up a little bit. In fact, I will lighten them up. Get some of this water in here. Now remember that's going to obviously dry a little bit darker than how it's looking at the moment and the paint underneath it's already dried a little bit darker. Something like that gives them a little bit more form. Now 
Oh, when I'm doing well, I've got that brush. Just push a little bit lighter tone and colour into up here. Just turn this into a some sort of wharf like structure. Just with a few marks like so we won't overdo that, over detail it at all. Put some light sparkle just with pure white. Quite a bit of sunlight just sparkling in. Okay, and then the other thing that I did was put in, let's see if I can get some yellow ochre there, a bit of blue maybe. I put in a couple of rocks and things like that, just for a darkish tone, just to sort of indicate that this was the sure side of things there. And you can just drop a little bit of highlight on those. You could run maybe a rope with an anchor coming off there. We could even put in, I mean, I'm starting to fiddle now. I could probably just leave it there. Well, smart, but. Can't always claim to be that. So I was going to say, could it put in an old post like so, with its reflection. Somewhere for boats to tie up, or kids on, who live local love to race up and down the river in their um, little dinghies. So they obviously need a place to. Tie up there, and that's about it. I think. I think we'll leave it there. We'll keep it simple, um, so that everyone can have a go at it. So that's not too hard to do at all. That's Noosa pelicans um, in the shallows of the water, waiting for the fishermen to come back down on Noosa River, um, waiting to get some fish and bits and pieces. <laughs> um, Pretty simple little painting. I mean, you've seen the three steps. We try and simplify it as much as we can so that even beginners can have a go. 
And the hardest part is just getting the drawing right for these guys. And what I'd recommend is that you get a pencil and paper and you just sketch it out a few times. Um, and then the next most hardest part is getting maybe the tone right, which I haven't quite got. But as far as the demo goes, I think it, it, it's working at least. When that all dries off, I think it'll be working. And, um, and then creating this illusion of like this sandy bank of the river and then it goes into the water, but it's shallow water so you can still see the sand and then all of a sudden it drops away to a deeper water which is where the boats obviously anchor. Just getting that right. So we've used the water ripples, the blue water ripples over the yellow sand and then yellow water ripples over the deeper sand, uh, deeper water. And, um, and that seems to give that optical illusion a little bit of detail on the back, but really I've done no detail except for a little bit of that boat. Um, and that's what you want. You don't want any more than that because that's not the in center of interest to see these guys here and what they're up to. So it's a fun little project. Um, I love painting pelicans and we'll probably do more of them in the future, but that's a really good, easy starter project for you to have a go at. So make sure you have a go at that one. Um, and in the interim, make sure you check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV, a link underneath me here. So it's uh, www.learntopaint.tv. You'll find all the episodes there. And also go to learntopaint.academy. Again, the link underneath me and sign up for our free course where I'll teach you more about the basic sort of steps and the fundamental approach um, to getting started with acrylic painting and then you can get a free course there and go through that and by the time you go through that you'll understand our process and what we do in a lot more detail. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I know I certainly have and I look forward to seeing you next week on more episodes of Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.